Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to another edition of Belmont Journal. Well, we have town election, April 2, two candidates running for the town moderator position. With me today is one of those candidates, the incumbent, been there oh, for a long time, <laughs> Michael Widmer. Hello, Michael. Hello, Steve. Nice to see you here. Good to join you. So, okay. Um... What can you tell your viewers about yourself and your family? You've been here a long time. We moved here to raise our family. Our oldest daughter, who is now 40, about to be 49, uh, was an infant, and we moved on uh, to Gilbert Road and uh, had two other children, and all three, Michelle, Sarah, and John, went through the Belmont Public School System, thrived, uh, and... Uh, are doing a variety of different things now around the world. One in Reading, Mass., one in Pennsylvania, and one in New Zealand. My wife ran for the school committee in 1981 and won, and she served for nine years and brought a, uh, she led the effort to bring a new superintendent into uh, uh, Belmont, who changed the face of the public education system here, Peter Holland. She um, worked uh, on the overrides for the uh, not uh, debt exclusions for Winbrook and uh, uh, Burbank. So we were active early, uh, and then we both went into town meeting that year. And in 1993, Henry Hall appointed me to the Warrant Committee, and I served for 15 years. I was going to say, is that a good thing or a bad? Thing? Well, exactly. <laughs> well, it's like all of these public services are good That's or bad, true, yeah, right? I we, mean, get, we make so much glutton, money glutton, with all those efforts. Yeah, yes. yeah, right. Uh, Four hundred and fifty dollars as the moderator. There you go. Well. So then I uh, ran in, in two thousand eight for moderator, and I've been serving since. And uh, uh, it's very gratifying. It, this community is a special community, and the um, efforts and involvement that Gina and I have had has been really rewarding all these years. So uh, um, it's, it's been a, a wonderful decision to move to Belmont. So, uh, so if my math is right, there's a reason I'm not an accountant, but 16, <laughs> 16 years in count. So after 16 years, you want to do it again. How come you're running again? One more year. I one more year. One that, more year. That's what you probably said. They probably told Gene <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> no, this is real this time. It really, it, it, there are two reasons, Steve. First of all, the upcoming town meeting in the spring and the fall are going to be dealing with some really difficult issues, emotional issues, that you are well aware of. Zoning issues, always emotional. Mm -hmm. The MBTA Communities Act, which has all the communities in eastern Massachusetts in, in uh, struggles to try to figure out how to deal with that. And then the budget, and obviously we have an override, um, but that's going to come before town meeting. So many people said, Mike, we need to have experience running town meeting here. We can't have a novice doing this. It takes experience and uh, the kind of preparation you've put in and so forth. So I said, all right. The second reason was, and this is important, to have an orderly transition, um, not suddenly step out and then have somebody step in. Say, all right, I'm stepping back. Who wants to run over the next year? And then have a, trans uh, have a transition where I can help guide the next moderator. So I thought it was the right decision, um, and uh, uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay. With respect to the position of town moderator, do you see that or consider that a partisan position? Absolutely not. Um, the thing that I've tried to do, Steve, at town meeting all these years in running town meeting is to be fair. That's my watchword, fair and balanced. And, um, and I've earned a reputation for that. You know, when I announced uh, that I was running and then when I had an uh, opponent, um, unprompted, many, many, many town meeting members have reached out to me. It's been very gratifying. And what they've said is, I really appreciate how fair and balanced you are. I never vote on any issues. I could. I'm a at-large member of town meeting. Mm -hmm. I could vote. I never have because I'm sending the signal as well as my actions that my role, regardless of what I feel about a position on an issue, my role is to oversee a fair debate, 
a civil debate, a respectful debate. Okay, and for years, so your background, well, 16 years as moderator. How many years? 15 years on, on Warren Committee? On the Warren Committee, 15 years. Okay. Three years, three years as chair. All right, three years as chair. Okay. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a numbers guy, so that yeah. wasn't too bad. Yeah, well, before that, so, you know, your career, you, what yes. you did for a living, it, it worked with numbers in a way. What yes. was that? Well, my whole career has been in government and public service. Okay. I, I started in, in uh, undergraduate major, graduate school, and then I, I was in the John Kennedy era, so public service was a calling, and I've had that calling. Ask not, right? Um, there you go. Yes, that's ask not what you, exactly. you do for your, exactly. what you can do for your country. And uh, so that's been my career. The, I worked for Michael Dukakis as his director of communications in the 70s. And then I worked in the private sector for 10 years. And then the last 25 years of my career, I ran a public policy organization called the Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation, which was the premier independent organization on Beacon Hill for giving straight, sh uh, straight information, nonpartisan information on the economy, on uh, the budget, on a whole host of policy issues. And uh, so the nonpartisan nature of that and being in the media and legislature is totally consistent with what I've done in Belmont, and it's mm -hmm. part of what I like. You know, my proudest achievement in that job was I was one of the leaders that, uh, that uh, gained legislative package of the passage of the 2006 health care reform law that provided universal coverage, which uh, took a combination of a lot of constituencies. But I was one of the leaders of that, and uh, that's been a huge uh, 2006, benefit. wow, time flies. Okay, so you've done this. What, what skills do you think would be needed or that you possess? It's like herding cats. I think I've said this before. Yes, Tom, like you never it know is, what you get. You never <laughs> know. All right, well, let me... Let me summarize it this way. It's a good question, Steve. First of all, you need to really work hard, put in the hours. The amount of preparation that I do with others, town clerk, town administration, and so forth, I don't do this alone, but the amount of work is really uh, extensive. The planning, so I instituted planning meetings when I became moderator with the town leaders, committee heads, and so forth. So we could go into town meeting unified around presentations, and the presentations that were clear so the town meeting members could understand them, and rather just than um, presenting the motion and leaving it open. So planning is one key. Another key is communications. So one of the things uh, we formed early on in my tenure, an ad hoc committee on communications, came back with recommendations. So what we're now doing, the town, is sending more detailed information earlier to town meeting members. And then the other thing is, I began the practice of emailing and talking to town meeting members about how I was gonna organize that evening, mm -hmm. what was in the scope of discussion, because as you well know, People want to go outside the scope to talk about. Oh, I've about never done that. <laughs> Thanks for reeling yeah, me in right. and saving me for myself a few times, yes. So you have to <laughs> keep focused on the motion that's a town meeting floor. So I give people advance notice of that. And then the conduct of town meeting itself, and that's where I think the temperament comes in. And a lot of that came out of my long experience dealing with government and with the legislature and the media, in which you learn, you respect that people have different points of view. And what you want to do in this role is let them express that in the best way possible. And so you're trying to be fair and balanced and helpful to the town meeting members. Mm -hmm. Because this is Belmont's legislative body. This is democracy. And that's nothing trivial in our society. Mm -hmm. And so my role is to help 
citizens' petitions. I work with the petitioners and say, all right, here's how you can make your best case. If somebody's opposing it, here's how you can make your best case. So I try to be fair, balanced. And my goal is to have a civil dis uh, discussion, respectful discussion. And I think we've been hugely successful with that, and I'm gratified that we've been able to. I mean, many, many other town meetings I hear from moderators, and they have explosions on town meeting floor, people yelling at each other, et cetera. And you know, it's been very, very civil, and we've had some very emotional, contentious issues that people are very angry about. But the discussion has really been positive. And uh, so there are, but I think it's the temperament in the end, and I think my long experience has helped with that so that I can be patient um, and try to run a very fair, but streamlined town meeting. We now have three minutes limit, as you know. We have electronic voting, roll call. So it's a streamlined operation from where it was 16 years ago. Well, yeah, it, it's, well, you never know how long these, the, the debates are going to be. Yes. You know, as I said, you know, I've often joked, you know, we'll pass the budget by the time it gets there in, you know, 20 minutes, 100 plus million. But if you try <laughs> to raise the dog license from five to oh, 10 yeah. bucks, it'll, right. it'll, it'll rage, debate will rage for a couple of hours. But, one, one of my, but it's always the way. Speaking of dogs, <laughs> one of my favorite was the pooper scooper back many years ago. I think that took a whole evening. Yep, poor, poor Dr. Alpa with Fluffy the Cat. That's the, <laughs> it's a historic speech. He lost that. Too. No one wanted to license Fluffy right, the Cat. Right, So, But he gave it a good try. Uh, but humor is good. Another piece of all this is humor. It's a serious business, but, yet, but town meeting members, I mean, we laugh from time to time when somebody makes a funny comment and that's that's not poking fun at anybody, but is just commenting on the situation. And I've tried to introduce a little humor too, because it's serious business. But you know, you need to have a little fun. Yeah, you got to break it up a little yes, bit. Yes, exactly. You got to break it up a little bit. So, uh, okay. So, so you run town meeting. You herd the cats. You organize that. You deal with the scope. You put in that prep. But the other part of the job is to make appointments to certain committees. Yes. Warrant committee, I think the Comprehensive Capital, Capital Budget, Budget Committee. committee yeah, tick them off. Yeah. Bylaw Review, Review committee. committee. And then building committees. Yeah, yeah. do you have a philosophy in, in doing yes. that and appointing people to these committees? I do. And it goes directly to what we've been talking about. It's a nonpartisan nature. So the Warrant Committee, the Finance Committee, is the key committee that recommends, with the select board and school committee, a budget to town meeting. So this is the arm of town meeting. And you know, in the broad sense, it's like the independence of, of Switzerland, let's say. It's not trying to push one way or the other. More money, less money on, on an override, let's say. But analyzing the budget and trying to understand if there's any savings in the budget, not, and then make recommendations to town meeting. So I'm enormously proud of the appointments to the Warrant Committee because there have been, uh, and, and the way the Warrant Committee is performed, all three select board members I had appointed to the Warrant Committee, and then subsequently they ran for select board and won. Two of the three select board, uh, I'm sorry, two of the three candidates running for select board this time, Jeff Lubian and Matt Taylor, I appointed to the Warren Committee. Mm -hmm. So these were individuals who were, you know, earlier in their career, I mean, they had been involved some, depending on who it was, but the Warren Committee gave them experience and, and they showed their impartiality and their um, and their uh, knowledge, and contributed. But then they moved on in terms of broader roles within the Belmont community. Mm -hmm. Recently, what I've the group I've appointed to the uh, Warrant Committee in the last two years, the next I hope leaders of Belmont five individuals who are I think all in their forties. They all happen to have. Uh, children in the school system, uh, and so they're, they know how they're committed to schools, but they're committed to the town. But what they all have in common is a willingness to work hard, put their ideologies aside, 
and do what is best for Belmont. And in the process, I hope they'll grow and become leaders in the future. So I'm very proud of uh, that record of appointments to the Warren Committee. And I think, uh, and, and I look forward to the growth of these people. Um, I mean, it's a commitment on their part, and they have to decide what to do. Um, the building committees, if you, I work on all of this, Steve, I work very hard. I reach out to town meeting members, town leaders, community leaders, schools. Um, I make announcements to try to find the best people. And then I interview every one of them at least one or two or three times. And four out of five people don't want to make the commitment because it's a huge commitment at the Warrant Committee or a Building Committee, as you well know. Mm -hmm. So four out of five says, no, I can't make that commitment. That fifth person says, yes, I'll make that commitment. And then I've gone through the vetting process with them, and I think they will be a good addition. So the building committee, I do that, and do that with the building committees as well. And I think one of the proudest things in my 16 years is the building committees I've appointed. We were joking about, you know, about the DPW police one that you were on. There's the Underwood Pool, the Middle High School, the rink, and the library. And if we step back and think of the huge commitment that the taxpayers of this town have made in those five, well, six projects, because the DPW and police, that are changing the face of Belmont for the next 50 years. The taxpayers have weighed in and supported that, and we owe a huge debt of gratitude to them. But it was my responsibility to appoint building committee members who took their role seriously and who could and could carry this, these enormously complex projects forward. And I think they've done a fantastic job. They've put in thousands of hours. And this, I mean, it's fantastic. This is changing the face of Belmont and for at least a half century to come. With respect to capital budget, warrant committee, do you try to balance do you try to find a balance? Do you put one from one side, if you will, and one from the other side? The short answer is yes, I do. But what I try to make sure is that anybody I appoint will understand that their priority is to present the best possible budget, if they're on the warrant committee, the best possible budget to town meeting, and that they do not view the Warrant Committee as a, an advocacy committee to lobby for their ideologies. So yes, I think it's important to have a range of ages, sex, and so forth, of all, and backgrounds, lawyers, accountants, and so forth. And so yes, I do try to do that. And sometimes people are critical, say, oh, how come you appoint this person? Somebody else, how come you do that? I have talked I have vetted all of those people, and I've been very candid with them, that they need to park, so to speak, their ideology at the door and do the hard work of coming together as a unified warrant committee and presenting those recommendations to, uh, to town meeting. Okay. All right, so you, you, you touted as uh, uh, some of the building committees as one of the your, your accomplishments. So what are, what are some of the other accomplishments you're most proud of during your tenure as town moderator? Sure. Yeah, the appointments, clearly. In terms of town meeting, we've touched on, we've touched on some of them. The fact that we have been able to, I've, I've <laughs> I asked Ellen Cushman, I said, how many town meetings have I overseen in my 16 years? 102 town meetings. I was taken aback a little by that. said, all right, that's a lot of work. Um, but I'm, I feel really good about the fact that we have conducted some very important business in Belmont, the town meeting, contentious but, but critical decisions for the future of our town. And we have done that in a cooperative fair, responsible fashion on town meeting floor. And that's a reflection of the people 
but it's also, in my view, in part a reflection of my leadership and how I've gone about the whole process, which I touched on, the planning, the communications, and then the conduct of the town meeting itself and the temperament that I mentioned. And all of that coming together to see that a town meeting can cut, can conduct important, contentious, emotional issues in a, in a, in a, in a resp respectable fashion and reach a decision and then move on. Um, that's what democracy is about. Mm -hmm. and that's what my career has been about in many ways. So honestly, I love that. So it, it hasn't all been... Uh, all roses and uh, <laughs> on the way. So you've had some challenges, certainly given you, you know, during the times and everything. So what were some of the challenges that you that you faced, greatest challenges, and how did you overcome some of those? Sometimes people have commented on how I am patient. My wife might say I'm not always quite so patient at home, but uh, but at town, town meeting, I, I, I certainly work on that. There have been a handful of times, maybe more than a handful of times, um, over the years in which um, I've been tested. <laughs> okay. So we say. That's a good word. And, uh, you know, part of it is people are passionate about their point of view, and I respect that. And so in, the, in their passion, they sometimes get carried a little way. And so I usually give people a little latitude to go on. But then if they don't, then I have to call them on it. And I need to do that, and I need to keep order. But it's not always fun, <laughs> because you're, you're ending, you're, you're trying to, you're not dressing somebody down, but you're, you're telling them that they, you know, they need to, they need to behave, so to speak, <laughs> and they can't start um, going outside the scope and and and, uh, and 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 being emotional. So that that is that's not fun. Now, blessedly, that hasn't happened very much because mm -hmm. I think, you know, we live in a very volatile time. We live in a contentious time. But I believe if you appeal to people's highest order, in this case, simply be, be civil mm -hmm. in your comments, mm -hmm. and then if others do it, people respect that. And so, um, so that's what I've tried to do. But I've been challenged, and that's sometimes, um, and I don't, and honestly, I don't, I, I do a lot of soul searching after meetings. And sometimes I feel, oh, I don't think I handled that as well as I could have. And so I try to do better next time. But, uh, um, but those are the main, those are the moments where uh, I face the greatest challenges. Okay. Well, you know, I, we won't get into it here, but, but you got us through, you piloted the ship of town meeting through the COVID <laughs> era. So we used to have, uh, you know, COVID, hybrid, remote, this thing, that thing. Uh, that must have been uh, that quite was a, a challenge. That was a challenge, and those are another area that I feel uh, proud about with the town clerk, town administration, and so forth. Yeah, March, all of a sudden things closed down, as we oh, know, yeah. on March. St. Patrick's Day. Yes, <laughs> of 2020. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we all had to scramble, and we had our first town meeting, um, virtual town meeting, I guess the very end of April, 1st of May, mm -hmm. just uh, six weeks later. So that took a major effort on the part of a lot of people. And so over that three-year period, I was in charge of 19 virtual meetings. And uh, those meetings went along very, very smoothly, by and large. And we, we missed, and I missed having in-person meetings. But I thought it was very successful. And then, as you know, we went last fall to hybrid meetings. And I'm a strong believer that the heart of town meeting has to be in person. But we saw through COVID that it was important for 
some people for medical reasons and others to have access to town meeting. And so we introduced, and it was a huge amount of work, some on my part, but really on the town clerks, the town administration, IT, Belmont Media, the schools. People don't know how much work it was, but it was, and some cost. But we pulled off hybrid meeting, and I think it's, I think it's true that the, that the uh, hybrid meetings last fall in Belmont was the largest representative town meetings, hybrid town meeting in the Commonwealth. I think that with our 300 members, it was the largest hybrid town meeting uh, for a representative town meeting. So very proud of that. You know, going forward, I'll be recommending to the select board that we continue hybrid. Um, and I hope town meeting members view it as uh, uh, larger, that, that in-person town meeting is the, is the center of it and that they don't abuse the privilege, if you will, of virtual participation just because it's convenient, but rather only if they have special circumstances. So it's a balance. Okay. Well, we reserved a minute or so for, uh, we're at that time. It just felt like it flew by. But we have uh, reserved a, a minute or so for you for unfettered comments. So I turn the mic over to you, Mr. Whitmer. Well, thank you, Steve. This has been a pleasure. Try to summarize what we've talked about. I'm a strong believer in town meeting, Belmont's legislative body. I've devoted my 16 years as moderator to listening to town meeting members and streamlining town meeting while making it more transparent, more accountable, and more accessible. When COVID struck, I successfully led town meeting through 19 virtual meetings. And last fall, as we just discussed, we took the major step of implementing hybrid town meetings to provide access to all. Through 102 meetings, I have led countless controversial debates with fairness and respect. The challenging issues facing town meeting this year coming up call out for someone with my experience as moderator. I have that experience, and I have always done what is best for Belmont. It has been a real privilege serving all of you, and I ask for your vote on April 2nd. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. Town meeting uh, election. Town election, April 2? April 2. Thank you, Steve, Thank so you. much. Good luck there, uh, pleasure. Mike Widmer, candidate for moderator. Until next time, I'm Steve Rosales. Take care.